Hi guys, I'm Melissa and I'm back with another video. Today it's time for my May wrap up. May was a quite weird reading month for me. I did get through 16 books, so I'm not mad about that because 16 books is still pretty good. But my reading didn't include a lot of physically read books. Like it was all audios and then I have, but you will know this as I go over my statistics. I usually always start with my statistics and then work into my books and what I liked about them and all of that. As I said, I read 16 books in May and I, I read a total of 4,871 pages with an average of 304 pages per day. In terms of genres, I read seven that was fantasies, one that was a retelling, four that were contemporaries, one was an urban fantasy, one was historical, one was a mystery, and then I read one book that was a science fiction book. In terms of formatting, I read one that was a hardcover, one that was a mass market, 10 that were audios, and four that were graphic novels. In terms of the length, 11 of them were regular novels, uh, one of them was a novella, and four of them were graphic traits. In terms of age group, 11 of them were adult, two of them were YA, and three of them were middle grade. In terms of page count, I read one that was less than 100 pages. I read three books that was between 100 and 199 pages. I read two books between 200 and 299 pages. I read eight books between 300 and 399 pages. And I read four, one book between 400 and 499 pages. And I read one book between 500 and 599 pages. In terms of publication year, I read one book that was published in the 30s. One was published in the 90s, then I read four books that were published in the early 2000s. I read one book that was published in 2012, one that was published in 2014, four that were published in 2017, three that were published in 2018, and then one that was published in 2019. And the longest book that I read in May was The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, and the shortest book I read in May was The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman and illustrated by Chris Riddell. It comes in at 66 pages. In terms of my serious reading versus standalones, I read five books that were standalones and 11 books that was part of a series. In terms of my actual serious reading, I read st only started one series this month and I'm actually really happy about that. I, I made progress in six series, I completed three series and I DNF'd one series. In terms of ratings, I read one book that was two and a half stars. I read two books that were three stars. I read three books that were three and a half stars. I read four books that were, no, six books that were four stars. I read two books that were four and a half stars. And then I read two books that was a five stars. The first book that I finished this month was Into the Fire by Janine Frost. This is the fourth and final book in the Night Prince series. So this is my first series finisher um, of the month. This book series follows Vlad Tepish, who is, uh, we meet in the Night Huntress series as well. And La Vlad Tepish is also known as Dracula. He is the Vlad the Impaler, or with many names, he is Dracula. So it follows him as the main male protagonist, but we see the story from the female protagonist, who is called Layla. And Layla is, um, yeah, is, has never been my favorite character of the female leads we follow. She So it has downgraded my ratings a bit. But in this one, I think that she definitely came to her own a little bit more than she had in the previous books. So I ended up actually really enjoying it by the end of it because I think that she's ended up in a place I really liked. But my overall opinion about this series is that I hoped that it was just had been a standalone because the first book once burned was a really good book in my opinion but i just didn't care as much for any of the other three books in this quartet and the other books that has been previously that was part of the night hunters universe but not part of the night hunters series they've just had the one book about the character and vlad was one of my favorite characters in side characters in the night Print in Night Huntress, so I was a little sad that it didn't deliver um, as much as I wanted to when it came down to a series that followed so much about him. However, I ended up giving this book four out of five stars. The next book that I finished was Temptation Rich by Robin Carr. This is book six in the Virgin River series, I think. 
I always keep, keep messing up <laughs> about this, but I, I believe it's book six in the Virgin River series. And this series follows uh, a, a small town of Virgin River. And usually with the most contemporaries, you follow a couple and that's all you follow. You follow their story from beginning to end. But what is different with Virgin River is that you actually look into couples that were already established from previously and seeing a little bit about their stories and stuff. And I think this one was better than the previous one because it focused a little bit less on too many couples and the main focus was again on two couples and not that was more or less that. And I appreciated it for that. And I think this is the, one of the strongest books in this series so far. So I gave it four out of five stars. I definitely really enjoyed this one. And some things happened in this one that I didn't expect happening. And it was not over the top this time around with the things that happened to some of the characters. Sometimes it can be really dramatic and not realistic how the things that happens to them. Um, but one of my gripes about this is that how many uh, people always end up being pregnant, like left and right. And it, yeah, it just, it just, doesn't really sit well with me that it's so easy for everyone getting pregnant in this town. I feel like that would, it would be nice if, if some people actually struggled because it would be a little bit more realistic. But there was a scene, I think it was this book, I hope I'm not mixing it up with one of the others, but Condom breaks, she says he's on the pill, so he they don't do anything about trying to prevent getting pregnant because he's on the pill, so no matter. But obviously she forgets that she's on antibiotics and so she becomes pregnant like two chapters later on or something like that. And I just think it's so annoying that it's so predictable in that way. Uh, but other places I really, really enjoyed this one and I give it four out of five stars. The next book that I read was Murder on Mulberry Bend by Victoria Thompson. This is book five of the uh, Gaslight ser mystery series. This series follows widower Sarah Brandt who is also a midwife and it follows Detective Frank Malloy from the New York Police Department. And this one, as usual, Frank Malloy is trying to not include Sarah Brand in his investigations because she, she's not supposed to be in that area. But in this specific case, uh, Frank Malloy comes across a body of a woman he at first believes is actually Sarah Brand because She's wearing some clothes that he knew was Sarah Brand's and like a specific hat that she has been wearing and he hated it, but he re recognized it. But because, but he noticed it, so he immediately thinks that this is Sarah Brand's body. Uh, also because the woman who was murdered was blonde and had the same figure as Sarah Brand. But he finds out that she's not in fact murdered, but he has to go and check that she's arrived because there was something fishy about it. And in that way, Sarah Brand yet again becomes involved in the investigation and yeah, I, I really enjoy this series. It's so much fun. I like the development that comes between uh, Sarah and Frank's relationship. It um, It's something that really that I really enjoy seeing how it develops with every book and it comes a new layer to their relationship. They're, they're not a couple. I just want to cl clarify that. Um, but what they do for each other without the other one knowing as well is actually always really interesting to follow and um yeah i just really appreciate this story so far and i give it four out of five stars the next thing that i read was um leon the offbeat by becky albertalli this is the second and final book in the something creek duology it the first one is called uh, Simon vs. Uh, the Homo Sapiens Agenda, and this one is the sequel to that one. Um, and it follows Leah. Leah is a character we were introduced to in Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. Leah is a closet bisexual, so she's not out to anyone about this. Um, she is a bit of, she look, seems a bit standoffish to other people, but she's really good uh, friends with Simon. Uh, one of the things I, overall, I like this but there were definitely things from this book that i didn't really appreciate i think that the portrayal of leah could have been better i guess i don't mind that she's not perfect but the way she that she's a little bit judgmental towards others is just was not sitting well with me and i know the whole coming out 
thing is always difficult and it's a different experience for everyone and she keeps it a secret for si from Simon even though he's he's a gay uh, so it would seem it's easier to come out to him but, you, but she doesn't so I figure that is okay. I don't like the fact that this one had a love triangle. I hate love triangles so much and I really didn't like it in this one either. Yeah, it was okay but it was not great. I think I ended up giving it three and a half stars. The next thing that I read was Haunting of Tramp Car 15 by P. Jelly Clark. This is a short story uh, set in Cairo, an alternative version of Cairo. Uh, it is, I think, considered a um, steampunk type of book but it follows a sergeant, like a police detective uh, or agent or something like that. And he is to solve a mystery of a Honda tram car. And yeah, um, it has some gin magic. It has some interesting type of magic system. And I thought I was going to absolutely love this one because the premise sounded just up my alley. But sadly, I just didn't ever connect completely to the story. I don't know what it was about it that I didn't really like, but I ended up just not connecting to the story as I wanted to. So I ended up giving it three and a half stars because there were definitely elements that I really appreciated, but I was just a little let down compared to how much I wanted to enjoy this one. The next thing that I finally finished was The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This is nominated in the booktube SFF Awards under the category debut authors and it was very hyped all over that last year because it's Asian inspired fantasy and we don't see enough of that in uh, the fantasy genre. It is a new fresh thing that I think we need in fantasy but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't write a well constructed story on top of that. You can't live, a book can't live on its own with only the fresh fantasy magic systems and stuff. This one had a character that I felt were really, really inconsistent all the way through. I, she had some consistency in the fact that she kept being a power thirsty person from the beginning to the end. Um, the thing is she uh, comes to this training facility uh, to become a military soldier, uh, training to become a military soldier. And she finds out there's this magic with shaman magic that means that she might be able to connect to the gods and she finds out that if you can be able to wield this power you can be extremely powerful but she's warned again and again from other around her that seeking those that power is not going to be any good for you but she keeps on wanting to become more powerful because she wants to destroy everyone on the other side of the war <laughs> which I mean, yeah, I understand you want to win, but that's just something about the way that she, she went about it that I just really didn't appreciate. And yeah, I just didn't really like that. And then I thought that she kept ha having to take orders from others in order to do something, which was made it in an inconsistent character. I also had a hard time just following the narrative in general. so. I was really sad about it. So I ended up giving this book two and a half stars and it's definitely my least favorite book of the month for me. This does not mean that you necessarily don't, won't like it because I know I'm in the minority, but I just want to state that to me, it, this was not what I wanted from a fantasy book. I didn't think that the story was very consistent and um, I didn't think it was very original either. I, that, there are so many tropes and I usually tend to enjoy training facility type fantasies. Um, but this one just didn't deliver what I wanted it to. And I'm so sad about it because I want to, there to be more Asian inspired fantasy in the fantasy genre. I want to read way, way more of it. I hope to see so much more of this genre in the future. <laughs> The next thing that I finished was An Offer from a Gentleman by Julia Quinn. This is book three in the Bridgerton series. The Bridgerton series is a historical Regency romance, I guess. It follows um, the Bridgerton house and they have... Do they have seven or eight kids? Um, and we keep following one of the Bridgerton sons or daughters. This one we follow um, Benedict Bridgerton, who is the second oldest 
son of the Bridgerton house. But the other perspective we follow is Sophie. Sophie is a bastard. She has grown up with a father who pretended that she was taken in from the street and he fostered her as his own, even though she looks exactly like him. The people don't ask questions about it. They didn't want to deal with it. But then he remarries a horrible, horrible person. And she decides that when he dies, she becomes a servant. No, I wouldn't even call it a, she becomes a slave because she's not paid for it. She's not treated at very well at all. And she is the, basically like Cinderella in this story. And she goes to this grand ball and meets Benedict Bridgerton at his own ball that he's hosting. And she dances with him and she has to go at midnight, you know, and she disappears to Benedict, but she actually just goes back to becoming a slave. And then fast forward into some time later when she has escaped the family, her step, horrible stepmom has basically fired her and she's uh, doing another job. but. As she saves him, uh, Benedict, Benedict takes her into uh, the Bridgerton household to become a lady's maid. And then there's a romance involving between those two characters. I mean, it's difficult to explain this book. It starts out as a Cinderella retelling and then it becomes um, more a story that I wanted it to. But then Benedict Bridgerton had a tendency to do some really awful things. And... So I don't know where to put this book. I really enjoyed Julia Quinn's writing. I really enjoyed Sarah's character. She was amazing. Um, and there were definitely passages of this, this whole book that I really loved. But I would wish that Julia Quinn would be better at writing men characters because that is definitely the flaw of this book. I had some real issues with Benedict at times. And so I ended up giving this three and a half stars. The next thing that I finished was Soul Music by Terry Pratchett. This is book 16 in the Discworld and it is book 3 in the Death sub-series. The two previous Death books have been my, some of my favorite Discworld books of all time. This one didn't deliver as much as I wanted it to. It is a, basically a rock and roll story in the Discworld. It follows the sort of message that music is immortal thing. And we also follow Death's granddaughter, Susan. And she has to try become ready to take over after death, I guess. And it's, and I mean, it, it was an interesting story. The two storylines didn't really connect very well to each other, I thought. Um, but it, there were parts of it that just didn't, it wasn't as a, an in-depth plot as I've had, become used to with Terra Pratchett, but I still really enjoyed it, so I ended up giving it 4 out of 5 stars, but it's definitely not my favorite read from The Discworld so far, not by any means, but there were definitely very great moments, and the ending was really, really great, in my opinion. The next thing that I read was Valhalla, The Collected Saga, Volume 5. This is the last and final collection in the Valhalla story. These collections always has three stories, so this one has Valhalla 13, 14, and 15. The Valhalla series is a comic book uh, series about the Norse mythologies. So it follows all of the Norse myths that we know, and they take the biggest legends from the Norse mythology and tries to weave it into a, a story that makes sense because you only get short snippets of the Norse mythology myths in the, the old sagas. So they try to use their spin on it and think, well, why did Thor go this way? And what happened? Why, what made Odin do this? And all of those things. And they always manage to make a really realistic story. And it's always extremely fun to follow. Valhalla 13 was the story about Baldur and Baldur's death. Baldur um, dies from being hit by a mistletoe um, that ends up being poisonous and kills him. It also follows the perspective like of um, Baldur's brother Hodor. I still haven't found out what he's called in English, uh, which is a problem on my end. But Hodor is blind and so his perspective was so interesting to follow and 
heart-wrenching at times and the way that others treated him was just a little bit sad um but his story was really great nonetheless and i like loki a lot in this story also because he's trying his best to make sure that nothing happens to Baldur, because he had a terrible nightmare that uh the that where where it was like he had been the cause of Baldur's death and all the wrath of all of the gods and goddesses <laughs> was not something that Loki wanted to experience in real life so so he decided that he's going to do everything in his power to make sure that Baldur doesn't die <laughs> so it was quite fun to follow that perspective Valhalla 14 was um a story that followed Chalfe. Chalfe is a human boy that comes into Valhalla in the first story. He has to go on a trial, a quest. Fry is besotted with this uh, giant um, who is basically kept in, in captivity by his her own dad uh, because he wants to protect her. But Chalfe is sent to the giants, to Utgard to find this woman and convince her to come to Valhalla to marry Frey because he uh, that's the, the task that Frey sets for, for him. So he has to go to the, on this quest and it was quite fun. I didn't love it as much as the previous one. The previous one I gave five stars if you are not aware. This, the 14th one I gave four out of five stars. And the 15th one is obviously the Ragnarok theory, the, the the story surrounding Ragnarok and all of the things that happens with Ragnarok. And this also means that this is the end for Chalfa and Roskva, the two humans who comes into Valhill in the first one. And the tie to the first one was amazing. I think that they tied all of the knots in this story and in that story. So I really, really appreciated it and highly enjoyed it. And I gave it five out of five stars. Great end to this really really great comic book series. I'm just gonna show you this is um, some of the art from Valhalla 13 with Loki as he's figuring out that he is um, having a terrible dream and he's in hell. <laughs> and then there we have the middle passages where there's a lot of text book like stuff where it talks about it's right down the exact myths that they took this from. Um, it's written down here so in a way that we can understand it, so it's translated. Um, but they sometimes have different myths and they correspond with them both to try and find the most believable story. Then we have art processes in the bottom here. This is uh, how she, they wanted to uh, draw Hel, the goddess of the underworld. Another picture of, and this is not very spoilery, but it has like a lot of the gods. From the second story, Sleipner is down there with his eight legs. And this is the start of the last and final one. I love the art style. I think it's fun to see these old school type of comics and the expressions, the vivid personalities you can see in the art processes. And I have really enjoyed reading all of them. And if I can find these, no, these books, or sale sometimes I might actually end up buying them for myself because I really really have been enjoying them all and I would like to reread them in the future and I think they do a really good job of keeping the Norse mythology how it should be and I really love that so yeah I've been talking about this book for a long time I feel like so I'm gonna drop it now this collection gets four and a half stars because the middle one was only a fast Four stars, but it's one of my favorite collections in this whole series. My favorite stories in Valhalla was Valhalla 4, 5, 1, and 13 and 15. Like those five stories, and I adore them all. So the next thing that I finished was Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. This is a contemporary, young adult contemporary story that follows three young teens who um, have all been adopted. They also find out that they are from the same biological mother, so they are actually siblings. And this one is about them trying to come to terms with the fact that they are adopted and want to maybe possibly 
uh, seek out their biological birth mother to try and get some answers in order to of maybe why they she gave them up and what happened in that. Also, one of the the girl the girls we are following. It's not all girls. It's two girls and a boy. Uh, but the one of the girls that we are following, who is one of the adopted girls, became pregnant uh, in her high school. She felt like she was not able to take care of a baby, so she decided to give her own baby up for adoption. And that's basically what starts her wanting to find her biological mom, because she knows right now there's a possibility that her mother was in a situation similar to her own or something like that. So it was not necessarily um, because that mother didn't love them, but more because the mother wanted them to have the best outcome in life. And these three kids are all, are all in families that are really treating them well at this point in time. And I thought that the, the family dynamics in this one was really, really interesting. They were all three different dynamics, but there were some really good things in all of the families that I appreciated. So I ended up really enjoying this one and I gave it four out of five stars. The next thing that I finished was The Wanderers by Meg Harry. This is a science fiction book that follows a group of people who wants to go to Mars. They are trying to find people to go to Mars. And in this one, they're basically being sent into sort of space camp facilities. So in a way, they're going to simulate going into space. So these, this group is being put together in order to find out if they, if they work together, how they work in a space facility, if it was to happen because they're in this close confined space and it's a long journey. So they have to be together in a real pretty long time to simulate how they work together. And it never really captured my attention completely. And I was really sad about that because I think that it was a pretty interesting concept. Um, but I ended up not really fall being uh, immersed in the story. So I ended up giving it three out of five stars. The next thing that I finished was Full Metal Alchemist Volume 9 by Hiromo Arakawa. This is a series that follows these two brothers who are orphans. They um, have tried to resurrect their mother with alchemy magic and because you're not allowed to do that it backfires on them and it ends up with one of them losing his arm and his leg and gets a, he gets a metal arm and a metal leg instead and the other one loses his entire body so his soul is basically captured in this suit of armor and so that is basically the where it starts with them and they are state alchemists they're working for the government as the youngest state alchemists in the world my favorite thing about this manga series is the different friendships and connections that these boys have with other characters and especially also the connection they have with each other their bond is amazing and i really appreciate it and the overarching plot has been for the past couple of uh, volumes about surrounding the philosopher stones and how they're going to try and find them and so, yeah, this is really interesting and I really enjoy these manga and I gave it five out of five stars. The next thing that I finished was The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is um, a fantasy book. I don't think I need to talk very much about the specifics of this book because I think it's widely known in the world. Even people who haven't read it might have a sense of what this is about. It, features the hobbit Bilbo Baggins as he goes on an adventure. Um, I love this. This was amazing. It had all the things that I want in a fantasy and I understand why this book is so loved by so many. It has, it has a, a perfect amount of humor. It has a vivid world building that makes you really able to see and envision uh, the world that is, ex that is um, explained or written in this in this book and I mean I did have some illustrations along the way but I didn't think they were necessary to make me want to to make me understand what this world was like and all of that but it definitely made it a good addition to the story that I had these illustrations along the way this was one of the best things I read this month and I gave it five out of five stars. I can't wait to try and dig into the Lord of the Rings trilogy, in, even though I know it's not the same. It's not written in the same way because this is intended for a younger audience. It still have the richness of the world and 
I do know the story from all of the movies, so I might not have a difficult time getting into it, but I can't wait to try and get to it sometime. I don't know when, but hopefully soon. This was five stars. I'm happy I finally picked this one up. The next thing that I finished was The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman and illustrated by Chris Riddell. This is a Sleeping Beauty retelling with an interesting twist. I don't want to say very much more, but it follows the perspective of a queen from another realm who's going to try and save the world from the sleepy drowsiness that is spreading over the land before it's too late. So it is like a fun, interesting spin of the Sleeping Beauty story and I really, really enjoyed it. It has a lot of beautiful art along the book with some text like this. And so I really enjoyed my time reading this. It was a very fast read as well. Obviously it's only 66 pages and half of it is illustrations, but it was also very uh, well told and I am definitely happy I read it. I gave it four out of five stars. The next thing that I finished was Sweet Tea and Sympathy by Molly Harper. This is the first book in her contemporary series called the Southern Electric or something like that. <laughs> and it follows this woman who um, has lost her job as an event manager and she is uh, has also lost her mother. Her mother uh, recently passed away. She has been living with her mother because her mother got sole custody of her when she was very young because her father was a drunk. But because of something that happens before she's fired, uh, her father's family contacts her to make her come visit them in Georgia and live down there and try and build a new life. Or, well, coming to her own and tr then going to seek new possibilities. Um, and so she goes to the, reluctantly goes to this small town and starts to getting to know her father's family and her father and why he um, did as he did. And yeah, uh, overall, it was okay. It was not one I loved at all, um, but it had something with it that I enjoyed. I much prefer her urban fantasy type story uh, rather than this one, um, but I am interested in trying out maybe the next book in the series and um, to see if she evolves uh, in the contemporary genre. I ended up giving this book three out of five stars. The last and final thing that I finished this month was Monstrous Volume 3 Haven by Marjorie M. Liu and Sana Takeda. This is nominated in the Booktube SFF Awards under the Graphic Works category and this was uh, the continuation of the previous two, obviously, and a lot of things have happened. It is a world that has um, all of these different races and species. It has talking cats that are pretty dominant in the world. Uh, like They have an interesting part of this world. And we have half-breeds, half-humans, half-foxes, for instance. Half-breeds, half-humans, half-tigers, uh, or half-humans, half walls and stuff and our main character is also possessed by this monster that lives inside of her and she's trying to control it and as things go along things change a little bit in the relationship between her and the monster and it's pretty interesting it has incredible art i think the, the art is uh, beautiful it's very rich and has some really this is my favorite character and i uh, yeah, um, obviously my favorite character is a cat because I'm a cat lady. I don't have a cat, but I love cats. This was great. It had a bit of a cliffhanger and I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen. I definitely enjoyed it and do recommend this. <laughs> if you think that it sounds interesting, it's not my favorite graphic novel series, but I did give this specific volume four and a half stars and it's my favorite in the series so far. So. So finally, after almost an hour of filming, I reached the end of my books that I read the past month. I'm sorry I'm talking so much about these books, but I just wanted to give you a, a reason for my ratings and a sort, sort of short summary of the books. And I hope you are okay with that. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that I've been reading to this month and what were your thoughts on them. 
Uh, what did you read this month that was your favorite thing that you read? Is there anything you would like to recommend to me? I would always like to know. And yeah, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next video very soon. Goodbye.